So, learning curve calculations can be done in two ways. One is the learning curve table, which we have down here below. The second is the learning curve formula, which we have over here. Y is equal to AX raised to power B, where Y is the average time or cost per unit or batch, depending on what we're dealing with. So if you look at that, the corresponding part of the table would be the column, average time per unit. So this is Y. A is the time for the, or the cost for the first unit or batch, which is generally given. Remember the table was in the form of a, AR, AR squared, AR cubed. So that's the A that we're talking about here as well. And then X is the number of units or batches. So that's this column over here. Okay. B is log of R, which is the learning rate. So the R we have down here over log of two, remember? Everything is in terms of doubling production. That's why we double production when we move down here. And R is of course the learning rate, like we said. So we're gonna show how these two things are equivalent technically, but the benefit is while the table has to stick to this pattern of one, two, four, eight, the formula does not. If we need to find the average time for three units or five units or seven units, we can use the formula to do so. Furthermore, even though the formula gives us average time, it can also be used to derive total time. Recall what we said, units into average time per unit gives us total time. Units is X, average time is Y, total time would be X into Y. In other words, if we multiply this formula by X again, the number of units will get the total time, okay? Furthermore, to find the incremental time, what we simply do is, we can now do it on a per unit basis. Because remember, this 96 over here is the incremental time for the next two units in producing four units, right? This 153.6 is incremental time for the last four units in producing these eight units. <coughs> but with the formula, we can find the time for the fourth unit, for the third unit, for the fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, all of them individually. How? By simply taking the total time of units and subtracting from it the total time of one less unit. And then for the, if you want to find the incremental time for the eighth unit, you will say total time of eight units minus total time of seven units, right? Total time of fifth unit, total time of five units minus total time of four units and so on, okay? Now, this table here is assuming that the time for the first unit is 100 hours and that the learning rate is 80%. We're gonna use the formula in the same way and see how it works. So we already have the average total time for one unit, right? That's 100 hours. So we know that is the first unit took a 100 hours to make, okay? What about the second unit? Using the formula, we'd say y is equal to 100 into x is the number of units, so two units raised to power b, which is log of r, so log of 0 0.8 over log of two. So keep in mind, log of two will never change and r will always be the learning rate, whatever it's given, okay? So log of 0 0.8 over log of two, we need a calculator for this. So yes, let's use a calculator. So we take our calculator. So two raised to power, log of 0 0.8 divided by log of 2 is equal to 0 0.8 multiplied by 100. So that gives us 80. What is this 80? Remember y is the average time. So this is the average time for the first two units, which is the same as what we had in the table down below, right? If we wanted to find the total time for the first two units, We'd simply multiply this by x, which is two in this case. So it would be 80 into two, which would give us 160, right? The total time for the first two units. And since the first unit took 100 hours, we know 160 minus 100, the incremental time would be 60. Once again, what we have down here as well. So the second unit took 60 hours to make, but now let's use this formula for its true purpose, which is what the table cannot tell us. Let's find the average time, total time, and incremental time for the third unit, right? For three units. So once again, we'll put in our formula, y is equal to 100 into 
3 raised to power log of 0.8 over log of 2 right so let's put this in the calculator so we have 3 raised to power log of 0 0.8 divided by log of 2 which gives us 0 0.702 multiplied by 100 we get 70.21 and what is this this is the average time for the first three units okay and if you want to convert this into a total time we'll simply multiply it by the number of units in this case three so we will end up with 210.63 approximately right and to find the incremental time for the third unit we take the total time for two units 160 subtract it from this to get 50.63 so the third unit took time of 50.63 and if we add up 160 and 50.63 we end up with a 210.63 the total time for three units so it works just like the learning curve table does if we had input four we would have gotten an average time of 64 and a total time of 256 and so on and so forth okay but now we can do it down to the individual level and that's the beauty of this formula which you can't do using the table